Hey guys. Uh, apologies to those of you who were hoping for a planner video today. Um, there is a consolation prize. Head over to my Instagram and there is a picture there of my uh, weekly setup so you can take a look at that. Um, but today I wanted to talk about Holy Week a little bit um, because this is the opportunity to do that. Happy Holy Thursday to all of you. Um, so basic overview, right? So Holy, uh, Holy Week refers to the week from Palm Sunday through Holy Saturday. Um, and that's this week that we're in right now. And then um, the term triduum, if you hear that, refers to the three like holiest days of the year. Well, basically, um, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. So tri, tri three, Latin, the triduum is those three days. Um, and then obviously this is all leading up to Easter Sunday, the beginning of the Easter season. Um, Easter is the biggest, holy, holiest solemnity day in the church calendar. Um, I think when you're growing up, you're, you tend to think that it's Christmas just because, you know, you get gifts and stuff, and so it's a lot more exciting. Um, but Easter is the holiest day of the year. It's the day that Jesus rose from the dead. It's the foundation of the entire faith, and so that's the reason we're here. Um, and so leading up to that, is some really cool liturgy and if you've never been to all the different holy week um, masses and services you should really think about it i really encourage you to look up the mass times at your local uh, parishes and uh, get in on it because it's just really amazing all right so the first day of the triduum holy thursday that's the day that the last supper took place on um, Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room uh, when Jesus instituted the priesthood and the Eucharist. Um, two of the seven sacraments in one night, and so it's the um, the anniversary of the priesthood. So priests are it's like it's a big deal for them, um, and obviously it's a big deal for the whole church because we celebrate the Eucharist and the institution of that the source and summit of the faith. So it's a big mass. Um, there's usually, I believe, only one mass for the entire day uh, for the whole parish. So it might be bilingual or multilingual, depending on your parish. In our particular parish, um, it's both English and Spanish, so that the whole community can be together in communion, all as one parish. Um, it's in the evening, and it is um, it, it features like basically a reenactment of the whole. Last Supper. That's the whole beauty of the liturgy and the um, the church year. And this is something that we actually get as a, um, a spiritual hand me down from the Jews. Is the um, the church year? You, if you look at all of, like the Jewish celebrations, they celebrate different points in their history. Um, you know, Passover, for example, or, or uh, they all basically represent a different point in history. That's a separate video. Um, same thing for the church year. So every year on the anniversary, as it were, of um, a particular feast, we sort of reenact and relive and enter into that ourselves. So on Holy Thursday, um, there's the washing of the feet. That's something that happened at, Holy, at uh, the Last Supper. There's some, I guess, controversy over whether you're allowed to wash the feet of women or not, um, because all the men were, oh, sorry, all the apostles were men, um, but in a lot of places, women are allowed to have their feet washed, and since the Holy Father did it, it's kind of like, okay, well, is it not allowed, or is it allowed? Anyway, not the point, um, but they will wash the feet of 12 men or people um, to symbolize that, where Jesus said that, you know, he... Whoever um, is the leader must be the servant, and he exemplified that by washing the feet of his apostles, so we do that. Um, there's like a Eucharistic procession um, where the, um, the Eucharist is brought out of the church at the end of Mass. At the end of the Mass, the altar is actually stripped. All the flowers are taken out. A lot of times um, the paintings and... Um, statues will be covered up. Holy water is usually removed from the holy water fonts. This is all depending on your particular parish and diocese and tradition. Um, but basically the church is empty because the Eucharist is actually brought out of the church. It's usually there in the tabernacle 24-7. Jesus is there waiting for you to come and visit. Um, but on Good Friday, 
That's the day when there is the Eucharist is not there. It's like this emptiness. Oh my gosh, it's like you can feel it. I I love the Triduum, guys. It is amazing. All right, so Holy Thursday at the end of Mass, they remove the Eucharist. They take it to called the Altar of Repose. It's going to be somewhere else on the church campus, usually a school gymnasium or like if there's a, a rectory or comment, maybe we'll have a, a chapel, but it's in a different chapel. Um, and so in the uh, Holy Thursday evening, if you remember at the end of the Last Supper, Jesus went out with his disciples to the garden to pray and they fell asleep and he said can you not watch with me one hour and that's what he invites us to do to join in that to watch with him for one hour or for a few hours uh, to spend that time on holy thursday evening praying with the eucharist praying with jesus in the garden praying to enter into the passion that's coming so on good friday is the only day of the year that does not have a mass that's a fun fact for you. Um, instead, it's called a service. It's actually a Eucharistic service. So there is, um, the Eucharist is brought in, there's communion service, but there's no mass because that's the day that Je we celebrate Jesus' death. It's called Good Friday because he died for a very good reason. Obviously, he died to save us, and so his death is good, and celebrating his death is good. Um, and so the uh, communion service on Good Friday, it's often sh a little bit shorter, but um, not always, actually. It was about two hours usually at our parish because you have the veneration of the cross. You pull out um, a big cross, sometimes small crucifix or whatever the parish has. Often it's like a big cross and you carry it in. Um, and everyone is invited to come up and venerate the cross, kiss, genuflect, you know, touch the cross in a reverent way, basically to sort of pay respect to Jesus on the cross and to the cross itself, because that's a, you know, it's a symbol, but it's also like it, it represents the death, but it, it's been made sacred, like sacrifice itself and death and pain have been made sacred by Jesus participating in that. Um, and so that's what we do on Holy, uh, I'm sorry, on Good Friday. And then you do get to receive communion, but it's the um, communion that was consecrated the night before. So they consecrate extra hosts so that there is more available on Good Friday for everybody. And then that's, uh, you can have multiple services um, on Good Friday. Usually it's going to be somewhere between one and three. Um, you can also participate in the Stations of the Cross, which is a special prayer that um, commemorates that last day of Jesus' life and different steps along the way. Um, the tradition says that Jesus died, at, or sorry, was crucified at one o'clock and then died on the cross at three o'clock. And so that's usually the, the service is going to be at one to three or one or at three or whatever. At three o'clock is considered the hour of mercy for that reason. Good Friday is the first day of the Novena to Divine Mercy uh, because Divine Mercy Sunday is the Sunday after Easter, so that's nine days. It's the first day to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy for that Novena. So that brings us to Holy Saturday, which is a really unique and I almost want to say weird kind of a day, right? Because the day before is all of the high tension of the crucifixion, and the day after is all of the you know, glorious exuberance of the resurrection. In the middle, you've got this lull, and it is really interesting because it's definitely, I think definitely the way the apostles must have felt. I mean, obviously, they probably weren't sure that Jesus was gonna resurrect. They may have known, uh, had an idea of based on, you know, prophecies and everything that they had been experiencing. Um, but, it's like, well, now what, basically, is the, the major question of the day, is now what? Um, and so it's really interesting that you, I always feel that every year. It's like this sort of quiet emptiness. Um, and so for the whole day, you just sort of, you kind of go on with your life, you know? You can do some chores, because you've been at church for the last two days. Um, and just sort of prepare. It's the type of, I guess, preparing for what comes next, um, but in a really contemplative kind of a way. I never even feel like I'm in the mood to like watch a TV show or play a game. It's always like 
this, you know, prayer, maybe some, you know, like reading a book or something that's like a non-digital form of entertainment. This year we're actually going to be having some friends over to do some yard work. So we're going to do some manual labor um, and kind of take advantage of just sort of that quiet moment to, to get something done. Um, and then the evening of Holy Saturday is the vigil. Again, this is something we get from Jewish tradition um, where the evening before is considered the, the vigil or the eve of the celebration. And so at sunset, um, you'll have the beginning of the Easter Vigil Mass. Longest Mass of the year, like literally three hours on average, right? Depending, some um, sometimes you'll get all of the readings and sometimes they'll kind of cut a couple of them out to save a little bit of time. But there is so much packed into this liturgy and it is amazing. If you've never been to an Easter Vigil Mass, um, like, I understand you might not like the idea of sitting in church for three hours um, on a Saturday night, but oh my gosh, you owe it to yourself. It's amazing and so worth it and so beautiful. So you start with a dark church. They turn off all the lights and then they bring in a candle. It's the light of Christ, right? It's a new Paschal candle for the new year. And then you're given a candle and everyone in the church lights their candle from that and it spreads like from the aisle and from the back of the church as it comes down the aisle and people keep lighting their candles and the light just sort of spreads and fills the whole church. And, oh man, then they read like a whole bunch of readings. Like normal, a normal mass has three scripture readings plus a psalm. So you get Old Testament, um, psalm, epistle, and then gospel. Um, but with this one, you get a, like seven Old Testament readings. And so it's basically going through all of salvation history, the whole history of the, the Jewish people, the whole history of everything that they've experienced that was a foreshadowing of Jesus. Um, so you've got like from creation all the way through, you've got Passover in there. Um, and some of them are kind of picked and chosen a little bit, uh, like I said, to save time sometimes. Um, and then you get one epistle and then the gospel, which obviously is the story of the resurrection. Um, and then you've got, um, this is like a really, really big day for the catechumens and candidates who are coming into the church. So if you've never been baptized before and you want to become Catholic, you're a catechumen and you're baptized on Easter Vigil. If you are coming to the Catholic Church from a Protestant denomination and you've been baptized before, we consider that baptism valid. Um, and so you don't have to be baptized again. You only ever have to get baptized once. Um, and so you just basically, it's like a formal ceremony where you accept the church's teachings and yay, yeah, you're a member of the Catholic Church. And then you receive confirmation, um, which is the second uh, sacrament of initiation which like if you grew up Catholic, you're baptized as an infant, you're usually confirmed um, in high school. Some places they'll do it a little earlier. You get your first communion like in second grade. But if you convert as an adult, you get to get all three at once in one night. And that's pretty cool. It's so cool to get to see people coming into the church. It's like getting new family members, you know? You know how like you go to a wedding and your cousin is marrying a new guy and you're like, oh yeah, it's a new family member. Well here you've got like, you know, 15 new family members joining the church all at once. And then you get to like witness them receive three sacraments in one night. And I, oh, I always love watching them receive communion for the first time. Like, I remember how that felt when I was, like, in second grade, but getting to experience that as an adult is just so cool, so beautiful, and there's so much going on in this liturgy, and like I said, I really encourage you to go. Um, you know, make it a thing. Like, it's, the good news is it counts as your Easter obligation, right? Your Sunday obligation. The only thing that's required like none of these are holy days of obligation. The only thing that's required is for you to go to Sunday Mass on Easter Sunday. Um, the Vigil Mass counts. So you can go to the Vigil and then that's it. You can go to just Mass on Sunday and that's it. But go to whatever you can because I really find that the Triduum is just the most grace-filled period of the church year for me. 
no matter how hard I'm trying or not trying, no matter how my Lent went, you know, some years I give up something really hard and I do really well and I get so much grace out of that. And then I'm just like ready to go for Holy Week. Other years, I pick something that maybe I kind of go, well, maybe not, you know, like this year I didn't do great with my, sac my sacrifices. But I know like even the years that I don't prepare very well, I still get so much grace out of participating in the Triduum liturgies. You're, you're putting yourself there in the feet of the apostles and just experiencing the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus for yourself. It's like that anchor point in history that like everything starts there. Everything in the faith depends on the resurrection. And it's like getting to experience that every year. You get to put yourself as part of the the mystery and I just always receive so many beautiful graces from from Holy Thursday all the way through the Easter Vigil so that's my invitation to you all um, if you're Catholic come if you're not Catholic come my gosh we're, you're always welcome and you're not gonna get like accidentally baptized on Easter Vigil um, because they go through the whole year of preparation to get to this point so don't worry no one's gonna see oh ooh, you we're gonna baptize you too that would be silly all right so that's that's all I had to say uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I, uh, I kind of, I'm kind of proud of my Holy Week spread, my weekly spread in my planner. So I posted that on my Instagram. Um, so go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, Ganchi underscore link in the description below, and uh, enjoy that. And let me know in the comments down below. Um, I would love to hear what your plans are for this Easter. Whether you're going to all of the masses, whether you're not being able to go to any of them because you have to work or whatever, but like I would love to hear what you're doing with your family, even if you're not any religion at all. Like, what do you do for Easter? Because um, I feel like for East, for me, Easter is not like uh, our plans are never set in stone every year. Like Christmas, it's like we go A, B, C, D, E, and they're like the same every year. But Easter kind of is a little bit flowy. This year. Um, my family's actually coming up to our house, and so we're going to be celebrating with my husband's family, but my family's coming along and sort of doing an extended family thing. Um, so that's going to be nice to having guests come over and um, looking forward to, to that. We haven't had guests since I decluttered and organized a good chunk of the house recently, so I feel, feel all American housewife and ready for it. Anyway, I hope you all are having a blessed Holy Week. Um, go to Mass, and I will see you in the next video on Easter Sunday. God bless guys. Bye.